we're trying to understand how monarch populations vary from year to year and what are the important stages of their very complicated annual life cycle. So models help us simplify the way we think about things because as a biologist um, who studies organisms that live in the natural world, the systems out there are so complicated. There are so many different things affecting what goes on with monarchs or any other organism. So we need to simplify and a model helps us pick out what is important. What are the important pieces of the system that we need to consider when we're doing our research? So an example of a model that we're using now we divided the range of the eastern migratory population of monarchs into four different areas. One area is Mexico, and this area is where they, they migrate through this area and they overwinter there. And then this orange area is their, their southern range where the first generation breeds in the spring. Then the yellow is what we call the north central region of the United States where the, the majority of the monarchs go. And then the green is an area um, east of the Appalachian Mountains where it's fairly distinct that some monarchs move up here. So what we've done with this model is we thought how can we simplify this movement of monarchs through their whole range and we put arrows, we literally sat down with a map and we put arrows on this, this map and we said each one of these arrows represents a transition. For example, this arrow represents monarchs moving from Mexico into the southern United States where they'll breed. And we can put numbers on these arrows and we can say what percentage of them survive this. So each one of these arrows basically represents our simplification of a lot of different things, of weather conditions and um, predators and a lot of things going on. But, but we're trying to simplify this so that we can come up with an understanding of which range is the most important driver for monarchs. But we have to make decisions about what not to include. For example, we know that some monarchs from this northeastern region fly into Florida. We haven't included that on the map because we decided with our best knowledge that that probably wasn't an important driver for the whole population. And we know that some stay during the winter along the Gulf of Mexico. But again, we had to make a decision. We needed to keep the model simple enough that we could, it was mathematically tractable. This was a very complicated model as it was and we had to decide what to take out of it. So the disadvantages of a model are even though you're using your best knowledge, you know that you're leaving things out. So it's a simplification, but simplifying the natural world is really the only way that, that our brains can understand it because there's just too much. We can't, we can't model everything.